got to know what you know. You can't be moved by people. See, when you don't know a person yourself, you allow somebody who say they know him to talk you out of who he really is. Why can they? How can they do that? Because you don't know him. This is why Shep is continuously pushing. For those that I teach on TikTok, those I, that I that join and, and uh, that come and, and hear, subscribe over YouTube, and for those that I teach on a regular basis, I teach know him for yourself. It, none of this should be secondhand. Where somebody can talk you out of what he said. That's why you study his word, so you'll know for yourself. You know, the most high ain't going to be with you. you, did, you he ain't going to be with you. He just, the Lord is my shepherd. Hmm. The Lord, meaning dealing with the higher, dealing with the I am, is. Not was, not will be. He is. Then my shepherd. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd lead, feeds, and protect. No, I believe he's going to protect me. But what do you mean? You know, he ain't. No, no, I know him. I don't need you to give me information. Thank you for having your degrees and all that. I spent time in the upper room. I spent time fellowship with his spirit. I received my inheritance. And even though it looks bad right now, he might want to know, can I look bad enough, long enough for him to get the glory? But you've been in this for two weeks. I don't care if it's been two years. He's still with me. I'm not going out openly sinning. I'm not going out worshiping no other gods. I may be in this situation for a season and he's just seeing how much I can stay where I am knowing that regardless of what my conditions are, I'm blessed. I'm poor in spirit, I'm blessed. I'm meek, I'm blessed. I'm pure in heart, I'm blessed. You're not going to define me by my situation. But look like if you've been serving the most high, you, you should now be this level on your job. Peace, leave, leave me be. Godliness with contentment. It's great game. Don't, don't, don't worry about me. I've been here. I'm doing my job. He told me he's going to open the door. He didn't tell me when. So I'm going to be content right here. He got me here for a reason. It ain't about me being the director. I may make more money, but I won't be able to touch these people. He want me to be in this same area with these same people sharing when I get the opportunity when I'm not working or whatnot. Being an example. You trying to push me out of the will of God because you go to one of these prosperity churches. Don't get me wrong. I believe in prospering if the most high is telling you to do something. But I don't believe in you you emptying your bank account because a man said so and coming down there throwing down a seed. God got to bless me because I gave $100. I don't believe in all that. No, no, I don't have no scripture. I don't see no actions of the apostles for that. But if the most high say I'm supposed to be the director, he going to make me the director. Surely I will prosper. I'll thrive. But until he tells me, leave me be. Godliness with contentment is great gain. When you hear that preaching the church, they need you to be chasing money so you make more money so you can bring more money to the church. If they teach godliness with contentment, that's going to limit what's coming to the, to, to, to the bank account of the church. Extra, extra, read all about it. Wake up, church. Follow the Holy Spirit. I done gave $20. Now you coming back, got the choir singing three or four songs, come on, we want more. Listen to me. I've heard from him. I ain't giving y'all one more dollar. Now we gonna worship a high end here, the I am or not. If we ain't, I'm gone. Well, you sure you just a disrespect. You call me all you want to call me. I ain't disrespect nobody till you start manipulating me using witchcraft Getting them to play songs over and over again for this, the express purpose to manipulate me into giving more money. It ain't about worshiping the most high. I just said it and I said it again. Yeah, there's plenty of witchcraft going on in the church. I know what I'm talking about. I've been an elder since the age of 22. I've watched it. Five, six offerings. We, we, you, you, uh, And we wonder why the Most High can't, can't, can't move in these services. Because a lot of it ain't about the people being perfected. It's about a building getting bigger. And he get ready to release some prophets. Oh, he raising up some folk. Oh, he raising up some folk. These folk, the Most High raising up, they'll be able to go up in the house of the Most High like the Most High son did, like Yasha did, and get a whoop. And say, you have turned the house of prayer into a den of thieves. And the Most High said no more. And Christ got a whoop out. 
Now, I'm not going to say they're going to whoop him with the natural whoop, but I'm talking about with his words. Stop this mess in the house of, of, of the Most High. Shut this down. Did the Most High tell you to do this? Did he tell you to do the dance team? Did he tell you? What did he tell you? Not what they taught you at the at the uh, the conference of uh, church conference of 2024, and that's what's happened with the church. We picked up the practices of, of pastors who've been successful. What is success in the spirit? Money, big buildings? No, success in the spirit is Thy will be done, Most High. I don't care if if, if we ain't got enough room for 54. The 50 that's in there gonna be strong and mature. We got time for that. I could have been in that mess. With the anointing he's put on my life, me to take you, bring it in, and use you as a trophy. He's fired up and he knows the word. But you want me there for what reason? If it's not to love the most high people and to teach them how to love him so they could grow, my arm, my gift, I'm not, you, you ain't gonna pimp this. I'm not gonna be your prostitute. No, no, I am not a prostitute. The gift I got on me is for his precious people. And if I hold on and wait, he'll show them to me or, or he'll bring them to me so I can teach them. Then if I'm dead and I die and go on, what's been taught to them, they'll remember the Most High's word. Got time for this mess? I don't care about how big your church is. Don't care about how much money you got. Don't care about that collar, that robe, none of it. Your cane. I got behind him here. You can see it over my shoulder. That's a gift. It's a walking stick behind me. And I decide I'm going to put it here when I teach to, as a reminder. On that walking stick behind me, I call it a shepherd's rod. Because a person that sent it to me views me as a shepherd. That's what they, how they shared it with me. And on that rod behind me, that's up against that brick structure there, it says... Something like this. I think I'm going to say it uh, uh, just like it's on there. He doesn't need your ability. He desires your availability. Where did that person get that from? They got it from me because I teach it to them. Those that I teach, that's something I say a lot. But it didn't come from me, meaning my rationale. The Most High gave it to me to help train his people. Stop trying to put yourself in positions through your own ability. Yield yourself, submit. He wants your availability. He can make you what he wants you to be. He just needs you to be pliable in his hand. Stop becoming something you want to be that's solid and hard. So when he go to use you, he's like, I don't want this. So he don't need your ability. He desires your availability. So for that person that gave that to me, and those that I teach, they know I ain't about all this stuff. I ain't about giving gifts and all. I do what I do freely. But when they gave that to me, that said to me, they get it. And I just put it over there as a reminder behind me that I'm a shepherd. My name is, is my real name is not Shep, Shepherd. A Shep. It's, it's, it's not Shep. But that's the name the Most High has used for what I'm doing because Shep deals with shepherd, pastoring. I ain't big on titles, but when you call me Shep, in a sense, you're saying pastor or shepherd. My granddaddy didn't know probably what he was doing when he took these little hands. Well, they were little back then. And then he took his bigger hands. He was blind. And he took and put his big hands in my little small hands and said, son, lead me. And I will lead him to the car. I was leading when we go to church. I will lead him different places. Even then, as a little 8, 9, 10, 11 year old kid, the most high was preparing me to lead the blind. My step, my granddaddy couldn't see. And what he was showing me later that in the kingdom gonna be people that got a heart for me, but they can't see me, son. So I'm gonna empower you with the anointing. I'm gonna make you a burning bush in a sense. As long as you don't make yourself big. The flame came down on a bush. That's what happened with Moses. The bush was a bush, but the flame was supernatural. He said, I'm going to give you a supernatural anointing. Now I'm going to let it rest on you. And you're going to be a ship. Not only for your granddaddy. And so, that person that sent that to me, 
That's a testimony of what the Most High has done. And I want them to grow. <clears throat> I want them to grow. And for all of you all, you don't have to send anything to me. That's not my point. For all of you all that want to grow, may the anointing that's on my life, may the spirit working on me impact your life. May he teach you and open up understanding. That's all I could do is give you, is let him use me. You got to decide after then what you do with it. So back to Romans 8, 16. Absolutely. Grow, glow, and go. And when you go, you're going to be, oh, man. Some of you just going to be, you're going to be, <laughs> you're going to be shocked. You're going to, how you know what's in you, you just don't know what's in you. And sometimes with a leader, he gives us some understanding, but no man know everything. Don't you be intimidated by these leaders out here, people that got gifts. Whether they're prophets or whatever, don't you walk in fear of no man with a gift. You respect him, yes, because he's humbling himself, loving the most high, and then loving you to share of the gift. But the gift ain't his. He's going to have to turn it in. He's going to have to give an account for it. And that's where a lot of these people are messing up. I don't walk in no fear of no man. I respect him, but I don't fear men. Got people out there that got anointed that you can't touch them. They, they take your money, right? They, they raise a big offering, but then as soon as they finish raising an offering, they get a whole team of people to run them back to the back. Why can't you go out and touch the people? Christ went out and touched them. He said, suffer little children come unto me. Why you super anointed prophet got to have a, a team of people like you fragile. As soon as you finish ministering, they're going to take you back in the office so you could do whatever and, and then go to the hotel room. For what? Why don't you fellowship with the saints? A shepherd should be touchable. Now, the people I, that I fellowship, most of them, I can't touch them. They're in different states. Some in, one in a whole different country. But how do I touch them? Praying for them. Talking to them on the phone. Zoom meetings. See? I could touch them that way. Not physically. Salvation is not physical, so that's not needed. The word going into your ears and then going into your spirit, your soul, your mind, and then process through your spirit, that's what you want to touch you. All right, Romans 8, verse number 17. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs, heirs of God, heirs of the I am, and fellow heirs with Christ. Fellow heirs with Christ. Please understand this. Christ died so you could come up. He came down so you could come up. He seated you in heavenly places in him. And now he wants to give you of what the Father's given him. Sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. And this is where you're going to tell who really loves him. See, you can really see it. It's coming to him. It's coming to this country. Christian persecution, whatever you want to call it. Out of, out of about five or six things that Mosai showed, showed me about eight years ago, one of them was. That might be the seventh thing. One of them that's coming here is Christian persecution. And what I mean by Christian, I'm talking about people that live Christ-like, like Yeshua HaMashiach, are going to be persecuted strongly right here. Now, if you don't want to believe it, so be it. You better get ready for it. Many people want to reign and be heirs and get, get the goodies, right? But they don't want to suffer. Why are they like that? Because they're not really want to be like Christ. Christ learned obedience through the things he suffered. He suffered. He went through the Garden of Gethsemane and also went up Golgotha's Hill to Calvary to suffer. Sons will suffer. I don't want, why the church don't want to teach this? One of the fruit of the Spirit is long suffering and temperance. We talk about love, we talk about joy, we talk about peace. What about long suffering and temperance? Um, excuse me, temperance. Temperance is self control. Being able to keep yourself from doing crazy stuff. You used to get angry a lot. And as soon as something happened, the devil wants you to get angry. After you get angry, you start cursing. Temperance says, the Holy Spirit's like, that's not you no more. You're not going to curse here today. If you want to be like Yeshua HaMashiach, listen to my lead. Don't open your mouth right now. I know what they're saying is bothering you. And, 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 and two years ago, you would have laid it. You would have gave them some ghetto French. You know, in them four words, you would have gave that to him. But that ain't who you are now. 
You're, you're son of a, of a higher. And he'll lead you on how, on how to conduct yourself. That's suffering to your flesh, but that's good suffering. It's going to build good muscles of character. And you know what's going to cause them to do when they go to bed that night? And say, you know what? He, sure, he used to tell us off when we would say this. Uh, if you did this to her years ago, she would do this. Why is she not like that? Now that's opening the door for them to ask questions of you. But if you're going to be, be, be carnal and just go off, and then time of grace, well, you know, I'm saving everything. You just can't mess with that now. My mama raised me. And who, who's talking about your mama here? It ain't about your mama. We're talking about your daddy. We're talking about your father. You are a representative. The Bible said, Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. When you seek his kingdom, kingdom deals with his way, his, his, his words, his laws. Kingdoms are based on laws. Laws are, laws are based on words. So when you seek the kingdom, you seek his word. When you read this Bible, you're reading what the kingdom is like. When a person comes to this nation, they have to learn the rules of this nation. That's what this Bible is. It's the rules of the kingdom you're a part of. If you don't study this, you can't be a good citizen. Just because you clap your hand and say amen to your pastor and give tithes and offering don't make you mature. Please take this the right way. If you don't study this, you're ignorant of truth. Ignorance doesn't mean you're stupid. Ignorant means you don't know. But you don't know because you don't study. You got to grow so you can glow. That means the glory, the light comes on you. You become a burning bush. The supernatural, the spiritual is on you. So you grow so you can glow. Then you could go. Too many people going without the glowing. Stop going without the glory. You're messing up the kingdom. You, 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 you're misrepresenting. Before you go, you got to become a disciple. Believer, disciple, willing worker. We got too many people trying to work that don't have the knowledge. Plenty of them. Plenty of them on, 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 on these social media. Plenty. And you can be boldly ignorant. There are a lot of people think they know. I know I don't know all things. And as I continue to grow, he's going to show me more. But what I do know, I want to know that. Because then that gives you confidence. But there's some people saying stuff boldly because their pastors taught them how to, or they heard somebody say it on another channel. That don't make it yours. You got to get this word to become a part of you. Once it's growing inside of you, it's yours. When it goes from seed to root to shoot to fruit stage, it's growing in you. So when they take the Bibles away, oh, yeah, the day's coming. Yes, it is. Oh, you're going to see it unless you pass on before then. You, you ain't going to be able to get your hand on the Bible. You may not be able to get on here and access Bible gate. You better do it while you can. I was talking to somebody the other day, sharing that with them. Get that word inside of you. Put that seed. See, the scriptures in, on these pages in the written book is like seed. If you don't take the seed out of the word and plant it in your heart, it's not going to be a part of you. So if you take the seed out of the scripture, Isaiah 6, 6 and 1, whatever scriptures, and put it in your heart, it begin to grow, it's yours. So David said, that word have I hid in my heart. What do you do? You put a seed in the heart. What does a seed do in the ground? It grows. So if you take my Bible away, I still got the root from that seed that I read in me. This is the time for us to Put the seed in here. Know it because you want it. You want it. Not because you're a pastor. And you want to look good in his eyes. He's not Yasha Hamashiach. Thank the most high for him. If he's an honorable man, he desire, He yes, he should be respected. Okay? But once he ain't doing what the word says, I go with Yasha. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He didn't say follow me if I'm not following Christ. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. A father type. Not nobody's father. Don't call me father. But what I'm saying, a father type, what does that mean? Fathers care. Anybody could produce a child if, they, if their bodies don't have any problem. That don't make you a father. It may be a father so far as it fills that spot. 
But a father wakes up in the middle of the night when, when, when his daughter or his son has a high fever. Rots them, hold them, pray over them, get a cool towel to wipe off. That's care. This is what the church needs. Fathers, caring. What a father also does, too. Yeah, you might be my daughter. You may be my son. Got them the cute little dimples and all the rest of that. You did wrong. Fathers tell their children you did wrong. That's hard to do today because some of these pastors don't want to lose nobody. But you ain't helping nobody. You ain't helping no child. You ain't helping nobody that's depending on you to be an example or whatever by telling them what they, you want them to hear. You ain't helping nobody. You got to tell the truth. There are probably people on here think I'm just, they, they probably perceive what I do as mean because I'm not following the normal politician, you know, um, you know, no, I ain't trying to get elected for no season. I've been called to love and prepare the most high's people. That love demands me looking you in the eye, telling you sternly, if you're wrong, what you're doing is not right. Now, I love you. Either you want to come on, let's get it right. Or you may decide, I don't want to be. I ain't, I'm getting off TikTok. I'm getting off YouTube. I ain't going to be on the, the Zoom things or whatever. So be it. My heart can't be so into people. That when a higher tell me to tell the truth, I go, well, you know, I really like that person. Uh-uh, you ain't ready. You ain't ready for this. You got to love the most high with your whole heart. Not 80% of it, not 70% of it, not 95%. The scripture says, love the most high with thy whole heart, soul, and mind. Then it says, love thy neighbor. Not love thy neighbor didn't come to love the most high. Uh-uh. And that's what's happening in the church today. And that's why we change the rules. We keep bringing it down. Pastor done step around three or four times. Well, he's just a man. Uh-uh, you in the wrong kingdom. Go take that to the devil's kingdom. No, he ain't no just a man. He should be a man that's filled with the Holy Ghost and allowing the Holy Spirit to take his mind. He should be convicted. After four times, four women that have been violated, or some of them probably wanted to be violated the way this thing worked today, but four times he done went against his wife, and you want to tell me Grace? What are you going to tell the other brothers in the congregation who struggle with lust? Leaders are examples. You can't tell him anything. But if you fall because you missed it and you get back up and say, look, I'm not the standard. What I did was wrong. Brothers, we got to be faithful to our wives. What? And you come back strong? But the devil going to try to blackmail you. You say, well, how can you tell him that? You tell him that because you've been forgiven and he can still use you. But if you go and become less than, then all the church, that spirit's going to be operating. And that's why I can't be, that's why some of them won't pull me over there. They don't want me to be on the elders board because I'm going to ask them questions. You getting a divorce, what, for what reason? Pastor, why are you getting a divorce? Your wife fooled around? You fooled around? No, 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 we ain't fooling around. It's just we kind of, you know, we kind of just grew apart. And uh, we kind of just, um, we don't like each other like we used to. But, Doc, that sounds like the world you're talking now. The Bible I read tells me that you made a commitment to another sister in Christ. And, and y'all allowed the Most High to join you together for as long as you live. Stop giving me this worldly stuff. The question is, what's the problem? Because I know if two believers are united and they get a divorce, somebody, one of them two, didn't obey Ohio. Somebody wanted to do their own will. Just be honest. Don't be using the world's phrases. Just be honest. Just be honest. You married her, you loved her, but you was a small time guy then. Now you on TV. She got that country accent and you don't really like that no more now because you got city folk coming to the to the meetings and all this and 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 and, and she ain't as beautiful as, as some people think compared to what's out there now. Be honest. You ain't satisfied. You got your priorities mixed up. And so if you divorce her and she hadn't gone out on you and you hadn't gone out on her. That isn't no scripture reason for no divorce. You got to humble yourself and tell all the rest of them. I don't care how more beautiful a woman is out there. She ain't my wife. That, that one right there is my wife. 
That's the one I chose. That's the one I want. And if the church, well, pastor, she ain't really TV ready. We ain't ready for TV then because that's my wife. Shut the TV ministry down. We, we'll stick with the hundred folk that's here. That's my wife. Yeah, just, just be honest. You've got to adapt to truth. But that ain't what's happening today. That ain't what happened. I hope what I just said made sense. It may not be happening at your church. But this type of spirit is, is throughout. And folk got titles, bishop and all this. Bishop means mature. You got to make a mature, mature decision. You're supposed to be the husband of one wife. All right. How long? We, I think I've been on here long enough today. We didn't get... Uh, 17, where we at? Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. 